Behold the wondrous glory of US 395 passing in front of the Eastern Sierra Nevada mountains, which are covered in snow. Clouds are creeping towards them to cover them in mist once again, but they are just peeking out above the Alabama hills over there. One of Hollywood's most famous filming locations from back in the golden era of the black and white westerns, the Star Wars and Marvel movies of their day. That's what we're looking at right now. That's what that is over there. And you know what else it is? It's the sometimes vlog. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a vlog that happens sometimes. Welcome everybody to the east side of the Sierra Nevada mountains, the back side of California that very few people seem to visit relative to the rest of California, and a wonderful highway to travel, wonderful sights to see, crazy deserts, wild mountains, snow, pine trees, shrubbery of all kinds. We will require a shrubbery and of course, some of the wildest deserts you will ever find in the world because just yonder, over the Argus Range and whatever other mountains there are, the Panamint Range, just a few mountain ranges over is Death Valley, one of the lowest, hottest, and driest places on the earth. It isn't the hottest right now. You guys right remember, my brother and I went to Death Valley during one of the craziest heat waves they've ever had in their history. The craziest heat wave they've ever had in modern recorded history, meaning the 21st century. And uh, let me tell you something, it was hot. It was awful powerful warm. Well, it ain't warm today. It's in the mid thirties over here, a lot of snow. We were wandering the Alabama Hills yesterday, checking it out and uh, having a good time. Dad, brother, son, and myself. Really, we're all like pretty crazy busy and we see each other plenty, but it's not often we get to go do anything together and have adventures. And of course, you know, our dad's getting older. I'm getting older. My son's getting, so we gotta, we gotta do a lot of stuff. Cats in the cradle in the shell of a spoon. So we're out here uh, just exploring, just hanging out. We were supposed to go to New Mexico and go to Chaco Canyon together. We we're gonna do a bunch of filming out there and all this kind of stuff. And if you're getting deja vu, yes, I did do a little update video about five minutes long on the other channel, just explaining that I was gone on this trip and doing this little adventure. And yes, I did explain this before. So we were supposed to have it to New Mexico, but it was too rainy, too wet, too snowy and all that stuff. So we're trying to plan B, come up to Death Valley, one of the driest places on earth. Oh, we'll be fine in Death Valley, take a couple of off-road vehicles, explore, do whatever we want to do out there. And then of course, as we were driving up yesterday, there was a massive storm that dumped all this snow. There was rain everywhere, closed all the trails in the Alabama hills and everything else. Now I'm not here for filming, I'm here for family. Um, we're here to hang out, that's what we're doing. But I thought I would bring at least a little sometimes vlog camera along and we could wander around and explore, see what we can see in Death Valley today if we end up anywhere cool. So hang in there. I don't know how long of an adventure we'll have, but this is the thing, the 10th anniversary year of Random Land. I turned 40. Yes, that's right. I'm an old, 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 old man now. And um, it's just a wild and wonderful year and a year that I don't want to miss out on and I don't want you guys to miss out on the adventure so we're going to be doing sometimes while it's random lands, road trips, all kinds of stuff and uh, but first this little break from all the first part of 2023 with the traveling and the multiple continents and back and forth to Florida and all that kind of stuff uh, a little break seeing the family and hanging out with the family and getting grounded again kind of getting back to zero on the quest for positivity grounding yourself family, friends. My birthday's at the end of the week. Allie's gonna, she's throwing me a surprise party. But if you have celiac disease, you can't really do surprise parties because I have to know that I have some kind of event to attend. So I prepare myself, my stomach and all that. So I know there is a party. I know some people are coming, some of the people who are coming, but she's planning this surprise so a party for me because never really had a lot of birthday parties. But that's a whole other separate story, which I'll tell on a different day. Never really had a lot of birthday parties in my life. And the few that I have, didn't always go so well. So huh, we'll give it the old college try and see what happens. But normally I don't like attention or anything like on my birthday. I'm like one of those feels like, oh, why do we have to celebrate this? I'm just getting older. You know, <laughs> even when I was very young, I was like, ah, why do we, why do we have to celebrate this? this? Why do we all have to look at me? Let's celebrate somebody else's birthday. Anyway, it's my turn. We'll do it. We'll do the birthday thing, but it's a nice way to get to zero hanging out with the family. Coming out to where it's silent, not here along the highway, but coming out to where it's silent, refreshing the brain. And then of course, uh, 
seeing way too many friends and associates and family all piled into one place probably where it's uh, kind of awkward and worlds are colliding and you have people in different bubbles all bubbling together and you're like, oh my gosh, a little chaos. And then back to filming some wild and wacky adventures. All right, I'm supposed to go over here and rouse the rest of the crew. It's pretty early in the morning and uh, look at that glorious view. So I'm gonna rouse, rouse them out uh, as Pap Finn would say, and then we're gonna head off into Death Valley, see if we can see something else. Pretty awesome. All right, I will meet you there. And we're back. We've come down into Death Valley and then up from Death Valley along this crazy road over here. We're headed to some ghost towns, but along the way is this, the Roy Jernigan mill back in the 1930s during all the gold mining operations in death valley lots of little gold mines were popping up he built a mill right here planning to service the local mines it is now all completely gone but up in the canyons beyond the site of the old jernigan mill uh we found some interesting stuff so let's go and check that out for just one second all right so check this out up this little side canyon away from the mill my brother came across some interesting stuff. There's a big old boiler down there, a huge boiler. And then up past shards of metal and other detritus and old cans that let you know there were dudes here back in the day. Like a bunch of metal, corrugated roof metal and stuff all over the canyon are some old abandoned cars over here. You'll have to forgive my huffing and puffing uh, as we make our way towards them because We've been going uh, from very low elevation to high elevation to low elevation all day. Obviously, we were just down at sea level in Death Valley and now back up thousands of feet. I think that's what gets to be more than anything else. It's not so much that the elevation is super high. It's that when you go down to low elevation and high elevation and low elevation and high elevation, ah, you start to get a little windy. But look at that. Look at all the cans out here. That just looks like a soda can. That looks relatively modern. Oh, not too modern. 1970s, which is already halfway back to the era when they built uh, what's his face's mill? Jergenberger's mill, that's what I'm gonna say because I can't remember how to pronounce it already after walking 25 feet from the sign. Look at that. Here's an old ice box up here. So it may have been Death Valley, but these guys wanted to have their drinks and their lunch meat nice and cold. And then look at these cars right here. Now I'm not a car expert, so I don't know what years these cars are from. This looks 40s into 50s. That certainly looks pretty old. Why are you making that face? You don't think so? No, it's earlier than that. Maybe. The mill was built in the 30s. Oh, wait, we can see the whole front of it now. So yeah, that does look a little bit earlier. My friend Brett's got a nice truck from the 40s that looks very similar to this, but this car here, this looks a lot older. So we're just speculating wildly on the ages of the cars checking them out look at this yeah the mill was 1934 1935 something like that and so that's the era that these cars are from what do you think london could you fix her up in your auto shop i don't think so, I don't think so. look at that look at the flatbed still on there now that is wild now was this just a parking lot and they decided to leave all their cars here is this where they dragged cars up to to die uh anyway the whole reason the 50s was in my head uh, was because of this car here. This looks much later than these cars. So it's this weird graveyard of cars and they're all up along this wash here. Whenever they get rain in Death Valley, whenever they get any rain in these mountains or even snow melt, it's all gonna be torrential along here. So it's surprising to me that these are in as good a shape and as high and dry as they are. What year would you say this car's from, Dad? Mid 40s. Mid 40s, you think? Not even 1950? Oh, well, there you go. Look, this one's still got paint on it. That is pretty crazy. I don't know some of the oddball brands. But... Yeah, the mill was 1934 to five around that era. So I don't know if these are related directly to the mill. Maybe somebody was camping out here. I, I don't know either. I don't really, in this era, I don't really know the Fords from the Chevys, from the what's it's from the Yeah, Hoosiers. I'm not a big expert before the 1950s. Since the 1950s and on from doing all the Route 66 stuff, I've gotten to know a lot more different car brands and uh, car models and oh, stuff like this. that. Huh? 
somebody had filled in what was the side panel windows. Oh. And you can see the weld lines here, and then they had some other riveted on thing. See, that's weird. So they basically turned this wagon into like a panel truck, almost. Look at that. Almost makes you wonder if they turned it into a camper. Oh, yeah. So somebody could have been camping out here or living in it. Maybe Charles Manson. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so look at that. I wasn't expecting to see these old abandoned cars up here. I've driven by the... Look at this weld scene, though, all the way down the middle and how it's falling apart, right? Like today, these... Uh panels would have been different but this is totally left and right welded right down the middle see that's weird yeah and i don't ever remember seeing a 1950s car with a seam like that down the center so who knows seth was thinking i estimated the truck down there looks like sort of a 1940 mm -hmm. like a little pre-world war ii truck I haven't seen enough of it, but that older. and then yeah that's what he said he said he thought it looked a little bit older than that, that. Uh, that's probably a chevy or a Ford. I don't know the grill shapes for those years, but that's that's probably 38, 39, 40. That yeah. one in the middle. So there you go. So that's sort of like roughly what's it called? Roughly around the mill time. Weird. When was this mill active? 34, 35. Oh. So sort of after in the aftermath. And you can imagine people camping out in it for a long time afterwards. Yeah. Before years newer than that for sure. Yeah, this seems like 1950-ish to me, give or take. It's, uh, it, it looks, it looks well. Let's see. The mid '50s cars were still kind of bulbous. It might be an early '50s. See, it, that's what especially I think. Especially if it's something like a Desoto or one of the other. Right, and look at the bumper. You know, it's not GMC. It's not Ford, which were in the design races. See the bumper right there? That makes me think feel yeah. like very early, like when you see a Hudson Hornet and those type of cars. Right. But yeah, I wasn't expecting to see automobiles back here, and also the color, because you could sort of see what color it sort of used to be. Which is also really interesting that it's not just rust colored now. Yeah. Look at that. So pretty interesting. Wasn't expecting to see automobiles out here on the trip. We are going farther down this road. We're going to head towards an old ghost town and mining frame. One of the many ghost towns that uh, was popping up in and around Death Valley. Lots of little gold mining towns popped up around Death Valley. And not just gold, silver, borax, all kinds of minerals and uh, lead. And there were all these people who thought they were gonna make fortunes out here and they'd pop up all these little mining operations that would find just enough material to convince East Coast investors to keep investing money and throwing money into the projects and build little stamp mills. And none of them really made a lot of money. But I think that was what this mill was meant to sort of capitalize on is like, oh, we'll do all the milling for what is being pulled out. So like the raw ore goes into the mill and then gets, you know, fine tuned into uh, usable metal. So like in the, in the case of gold or silver, you take it and you go from rock that has gold or silver in it and crush it and pound it and then chemically remove, separate the gold and the silver. And then you have some usable gold and silver. Uh, to do actual stuff with. Anyway, so I'm gonna be exploring with the fam a little more over here by the mill, and then we're gonna take off up the canyon towards a ghost town. Hopefully, we'll see you there. I'm not 100% sure this is legal, but I decided to hitch a ride back to the bottom of the hill instead of walking. So I'm just riding on the back of the car. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There goes my brother, checking out those tanks. Time to move on to some other a ghost town in the old west parkour <laughs> I have been a lot of places in my life but every once in a while I get to a place that I know I'm gonna think I dreamed it or it's gonna seem like a dream forever check this out all right we've made it all the way to the end of the line to the end of the road here up past the flattened completely nothing left of it ghost town of skidoo yes as in 23 skidoo california and we're up here at the end of the road where the mill site is 600 feet or so beyond this gate but it's just so cool looking the epic mountains out there snow covered mountains we're just coming around the gate here which is stopping people from driving their cars out yonder the epic snow covered mountains beyond then the rocks here there's been all these ravens coming down to check out the people coming into the area all these dirt bikes are just taking off i don't know if you can hear them uh, puttering away around the corner but other than those dirt bikes an absolute profound 
immense silence. And this is something I've been looking forward to forever. I mean, I know normally, I know that normally you're used to me going, it's a sound times vlog, getting wacky, getting crazy, getting all my energy up. But uh, the energy's been up for a while now, uh, going from California, Arizona, California, Florida, California, Paris, California, Florida, California. So uh, <laughs> well, I'm a little reduced in energy. I had friends from out of the country who were visiting, haven't visited in three years, like my best friend, and we were hanging out together and doing all this stuff so i was driving up to la every day for the last couple weeks and uh so not only is it great to have family time time with my dad and my brother and london obviously my son who just turned 16 but i was really looking forward to this now listen can you hear that that is nothing it is freezing cold out here as you can see there's a little leftover frozen snow it's just above freezing it's in the high 30s uh, out on this cliff. The wind though is coming off of those glacially frozen peaks out there. We're just about to come around the corner here. Oh, this big old tank that's falling down off the mill. We're just about to come across the Skidoo Mill. Oh, look at this. This is awesome. There's only another couple of people out here. They're about to pass us on the trail. Look at that. There's what it used to look like. And there's what it looks like now. Jeez Louise. What a lot of pieces of metal have fallen. Look at all that corrugated metal siding. So that's all the pieces of corrugated metal we saw all coming up the road. It's just crazy. They weren't built to last. They were built to extract, get as much minerals out of the earth as possible, as quickly as possible, and get out. And 23 skidoo! Grab the rich stuff in 23 skidoo. This is awesome. So... Wow, look at how far down that goes. Just perched on the side of the cliff. And I don't know what year this was created. Let's go back and find a little historical context. By the way, they're all eating their gluttony sandwiches. That's why I'm walking away from them. Powered by water pipe from a spring high in the Panamint Range, which is where we are high up in these mountains here. Skidoo Mill extracted gold from ore. Ooh, it was one of Death Valley's most profitable operations. It's only partially stabilized. Be careful. Uh, it was donated to the National Park in... Uh, 1993 and it does not tell us when it was built so that's kind of a bummer but back in the day there were tons of little gold mining and little pocket mining little small mining operations like I mentioned earlier that got off the ground actually as we were driving here uh, we saw tons I love how the sign says area closed but it's so old and worn away that it looks like people have been ignoring that. There's all kinds of footsteps along there. Or maybe this area is closed. You don't know which area is closed. Let's hike up here. Hold on, we'll be quiet while we pass these people. Hello. Hi. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> oh, it's beautiful out here. I can't believe that view. We live, yeah. And you can see, the, you could see this. Well, you can maybe see, those are probably the White Mountains over there. Yeah, I would guess so. And those are the Panamints right there. It's beautiful though. What a view. I couldn't and believe that. This is remarkable because we live near Virginia City. Oh, really? Yeah. I love Virginia City. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, the rock's the same. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Yeah, but you can see the stamps are still in place, the big things that they crush the rock with. Oh, everything. that's awesome. So, yeah. That's cool. gorgeous up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. I love meeting friendly people on the trail. Normally I would talk longer, but I was uh, trying to get up to here and talk to you guys, but check this out. She's right, this is amazing. This is incredible. So we're looking now across the Panamint Valley. I think to the left is the Argus Range, if I'm not wrong. And then ahead out there that way are the White Mountains, which cross over into Nevada. Behind us is, um, well, you can't see, but back behind the hills and mountains behind us, you can see all the way down, just like you can on this side, there was a crack opening as we made our way up the Skidoo Road, where you could see all the way down to Furnace Creek, which is like sort of where the visitor center is for Death Valley. And uh, so basically you're seeing all the way back into Death Valley. So I guess that couple's gonna come up here in a second. But see the giant vats for chemicals and water and cyanide and whatever else they needed for extracting the gold. This is so cool. I mean, what a beautiful, intense 
and I gotta tell you, it probably makes it, no, I definitely know, I have enough experience to know this, it's not gonna look as good on camera. It's a lot of grays and weird, you know, hard to expose it to the light and all that. So the picture you see is epic as it looks. It's much more impressive with the naked eye. I always find that in cloudy conditions that it's very difficult to capture a video of just how incredible something looks when it's cloudy whew, and cold. We're up now, I'd say, I don't know, four or 5,000 feet, something like that. We're pretty high up. Um, as you can see, we're just below the snow. There's a little bit of snow up here, mostly melted off. Look at this. Obviously, they don't want us walking on the equipment that's only, quote unquote, partially stabilized. But I mean, you could just see for mile after mile. And this, this is what I was really looking forward to. So just coming and hearing the wind. Ooh, I don't know how much you guys can hear of that. This is all still new, this camera, this setup, this testing, but whew, that is a cold wind coming off those snowy peaks yonder. But uh, this is what I wanted. This is what I've been waiting for, just a little brain silence. And obviously there's been some crazy stuff going on in addition to adventures and just, oh, just lots of drama and busy stuff going on. People talking about people talking and whatnot. And it just felt like uh, it was like, this, was a, this trip was pre-planned a long time in advance, but it was just really great timing that I got to the end of those travels, that I got to the end of whatever, and it just so happens to be right at the birthday week uh, where we were gonna do this trip that a bunch of stuff was going on and crazy stuff, just, you know, low grade kind of stress stuff, and it just feels good to be outside in the open air, even though, even though that air is very, very cold. Wow, I'm just trying to see, you know, where were they getting the ore from? There was a mine like way farther down the mountain back around the other side. It's always a little bit of a mystery, a little bit of a puzzle because you're basically coming up to see a crazy former industrial operation, right? And so oh, it was definitely the good side was definitely on the trail as you approach, huh? This side is much harder to see. Um, but you're always like trying to mentally piece back together the puzzle of like, okay, where did they bring the ore and where did it go? But the stamps are supposedly down there. So let's go down there and check that out. <sighs> Normally, when I visit a historical location or someplace like this, I would have done a lot of research and been, whoa, a little slippery right there. <laughs> Don't want to tumble down the cliff and read all about it. I would have had all the dates and all the information on who founded the mine and when it closed and where everybody went, where'd they live. Um, like I said, the town site, or like I may, maybe mentioned, the town site is behind us where the town of Skidoo was. It's pretty much flat, pretty much nothing left. Um, but this is completely random here. We were gonna go to New Mexico. We were gonna go off to Chaco Canyon. We were gonna go off to some places like that. And uh, that didn't end up happening just because of the weather. And in fact, Death Valley, the hottest, driest place in North America, even Death Valley has got a little bit of rain yesterday and a little sprinkling this morning, a little bit of snow up here in the higher elevations. And so that's why uh, it's so cold. These, these big winter storms have been moving through. But it was pretty much the only place we could get to and travel and kind of do a little bit of what we wanted to do. We wanted to see a little bit of desert action. And my brother just got his new Bronco. So we want to take the Bronco and be able to do some, some little bit of dirt road kind of driving. Not super crazy off-roading, not rock crawling, nothing like that. But just sort of for buying it off the main trails. But yes, look at this. Yeah, you can see the big stamps are still in there. Of course, this has got keep out all over it. I don't know how close you're really supposed to get. That area closed sign is a little disturbing, but it's very faded and old. And I did see that elderly couple coming from this way as I was making my way down the first time. Yeah, you can see all the pipes and rock work. I guess they tell you that because they don't want you being, to stand here and then have all this crumble down on you. You certainly should never stand on any old timbers or any old mining stuff, even if it has signs saying, welcome crawlers all over it. But yeah, this is one hefty, cool piece of machinery. Look at that. Anyways, my big thing on the quest for positivity has always been, you know, try to soak it in, take everything in, try to stay positive and and think about the future, think about future plans, think about all that kind of stuff, not think about drama that's going on, let it go as much as possible. But I'm only human, there's some times where drama or stress, or especially, you know what, what, what gets to me? is never when people are angry at me, or talking crazy talk, or lying on you, or whatever. 
it's it's never your enemies that get to you it's sort of your friends because if someone's talking about you or there's drama going around and it has to do anything with your friends or your friends are involved they want to back you up and now your friends will talk your friends are the ones that get in your brain you know and just you'll be around lots of people trying to helpfully chatter about lots of things and uh, it's always good to just go okay just get a little break from uh, anybody talking about anybody and anybody doing anything negative and come out like this. I find it helps a, like a palate cleanser to come out to the desert. And I've always loved coming out to the Death Valley, especially. California desert is just so quiet. And of course I'm yapping in it. So let's just be really quiet now. Take in the wind. Wow. So like I was saying, a little bit disorganized. So this is sort of last minute stuff. And we're like, let's just poke around Death Valley and see some stuff in Death Valley that we've never really peeked at before. Um, so we're doing this, which is up in the mountains. If you look up Skidoo, California, uh, S-K-I-D-O-O, -O, you'll see we're sort of like up in the mountains uh, on the east side. No, excuse me, the west side of Death Valley, which is the side I don't often come from. And so we haven't checked out a lot of the stuff on the west side of the valley. Even I, who've explored Death Valley quite a bit, um, without my dad or my brother on my own, uh, I have never gone over to the west side of the actual Death Valley itself. I was wondering what that noise was. I can see now there's water dripping off. So snow and ice collected up here on the stamps. Look at that. Let me see if I can extend this. <laughs> Got a little extended tripod. Can you guys see that? See the big metal stamps? And then that big wheel up here would turn and lift the stamps and smash them down, smash them down and crush the ore, pulverize it. Then they would chemically treat it and separate, you know, the gold from the other uh, base metals and stuff. Look at that giant metal wheel right there, which would have had an old big leather or rubber strap, a big old belt running on there. This is some crazy heavy duty machinery now. Danger keep out, we don't want to go past that. Just lift this up, let's get a little look. Look at that rickety wooden staircase up there. This is so cool looking. I mean, if they could, I know they couldn't, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Like I was gonna say, if you look up Skidoo, California, you'll see we're on the west side, uh, in the mountains, west of the actual Death Valley Classic, as they would say. Let me lower this camera here. Let me see if I can lower it without behind bucking anything. Whoa, sorry about that. Um, you'll see we're way off on the west, way up high in the mountains. It would be very difficult to restore this to any kind of semblance of working order, historically speaking, or anything. But yeah, see these giant vats down here now. You'd have all the stuff coming in. And I, I know more about the silver process than the gold process, but you'd have all kinds of things like cyanide and crazy chemicals, mercury. I know mercury for sure would collect the silver and the gold out of other metals and different things like that. And so you have these vats of highly, extremely toxic chemicals and sludging in with all the pulverized rock coming down from the stamps. And so they would use gravity for each step of the way. Like the sign said, they had to pipe in water at the top to help run through the whole process. And eventually you would have gold ore. I believe this one was for gold. So you'd have gold ore. Look at that water tank or that big liquid tank of some kind that crashed all the way down the mountain from here anyway like i was saying it would be cool though if they could kind of restore this stuff right like you're never going to restore it to full operation but it'd be neat if they could restore the platforms to to the degree that visitors could sort of climb on them and get a closer look at those stamps because they're so close and they're just tantalizingly out of reach because you know danger keep out i would never go under there anyway and this is so rickety and fragile and the biggest thing is not just safety, because people are like, oh, I'll risk it. It looks pretty solid. The safety issue isn't the huge issue. The hugest part of the issue, the big issue is, you don't want to destroy any artifacts. What? I'm coming. I'm getting out of the way of your picture in one second. This is my brother up there. He's like, it's rad looking. I just got to find the trail back up. Oh, so... <laughs> But the biggest thing is, yeah, you don't want to damage the historical artifact. You don't want to be the one whose foot goes through that and ruins it for the next generation, you know? So you got to be kind of respectful. Anyway, this is a weird vlog. It's a weird sometimes vlog. It's, first of all, it's edited and it's patchy and it's got little bits and pieces of information here. It's a little scatterbrain and that's all because we have no plan. We are totally winging the family trip together, the boys trip together. And uh, we're winging where we get food. We were winging where we were sleeping each night. We we're winging whether we're going to go camping or not. We're pulling out, oh, it's too cold. We're pulling out more jackets. Uh, and then we're like, well, we might as well go down this road, winging the stops and discovering stuff that we didn't research the way. We and normally, by the way, not only would I have researched this stuff to film it, but 
normally even when we go somewhere, my dad, I get that streak from my dad and my brother who thoroughly will do lots of reading while I'm catching my breath. Will thoroughly do a lot of reading. Like my brother is just like me where he is like, oh, we're going to this place. And even if he has never been interested in it before, he'll want to do all the reading and find out who started that mine and what they were up to. And I can't breathe down here, Seth. What? Can't breathe. Uh, he'll want to do all the research and have all the historical context and we didn't get a chance to do that, so we're all kind of like, oh man. And of course there's no cell phone service up here, so it's like uh, you're like back in the day and getting to like sort of speculate, you know, before Google, you would kind of speculate, oh, I wonder if that's whatever. I think that's whatever. And you have these really interesting conversations. Now, you don't really have as interesting of conversations because you just bust it out and go, well, there's a way to find this out. Yeah, I guess it was 1821. Oh, it was 1821 and you're all good to go. But back in the day, you used to have to argue stuff and speculate. That's kind of what it's been like now. We've been like back in the past, speculating and trying to figure out what all this stuff is without any context. So we're having fun, hanging out, talking. It's weird being in the two different cars. We've got walkie talkies. So we're playing walkie talkie pranks and pushing the button to make alarms and, and all that different kind of stuff. London's doing okay. When you have a teenager out on a trip of any kind, um, it's always interesting whether you're gonna get the grumpy teenager, oh, I wanna be home with playing video games with my friends. He was excited to come on the trip. So he's definitely happy to be here. Or, oh, I'm really getting winded. Or if you're gonna get the engaged, really talkative, chatty teenager. And we sort of got a mix of both today. He's like chatty, but kind of low energy. So I think the sandwich will help. Getting out will help. Walking around will help. Climbing over stuff will help. But yeah, this is what's going on. Hate to bore you with this particular vlog. Obviously in the future, we'll be running around and being crazy and I'll have a lot more interesting stuff to tell you. Um, but this is the first time I've ever laid eyes on this place. You just saw it live with me and I'm a little out of breath. I was having some heart issues. Um, stress generally is really bad for like my heart condition. That's why I try to avoid any kind of stressful drama or stressful situation. I usually will be like, hey, I have a friend deal with it. Ali, can you handle that one? And I try to just say very low stress. It, it affects, it's like any kind of low grade anxiety will sort of affect the particular heart condition that I have and just make it a little bit harder to function and, and all like, it just, it just kind of triggers it and makes it uh, sort of activated. And uh, so that was going on for the last week or two. And then when I switch elevation, the first couple of days that I get up into any kind of higher elevation, um, it can be a little tough, but I've been staying hydrated, I've been watching it, monitoring it, keeping an eye on that strange pulsating beat. So I'm perfectly safe and everything, but uh, yeah, I've been trying to take it easy and I notice I get winded pretty quickly. Normally it takes me about, hmm, I'd say like two days to acclimate. I'd say two days. When I was a little bit younger, when I was a little bit younger, it only took me a day or so to acclimate to a higher elevation and hiking around and doing all that stuff. But I have noticed lately, it's like, yeah, I kind of need to wake up two mornings in a row in a higher elevation and then I'm good to go. It never used to affect me at all when I was really young, like London days. So these here are the stamps I was talking about, the big metal stamps. These are giant metal weights that boom, 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 will crush and pulverize um, the ore and uh, obviously this was all enclosed so we were standing here see that we we're right down at the bottom there of this structure here so we we're pretty much on the trail right there and then uh, all those other layers those stairs and everything would have all been indoors which is pretty wild I mean, that's pretty mind blowing hey look it i just noticed this big tank maybe that big tank could be that big tank who knows it's very hard to tell since they all originally would have been inside. All right, I'm gonna go and join my brother, my dad, my son, since that is the point of me being up here. I just wanted to share this crazy view with you and a little bit of this crazy day, let you guys know what I was up to and uh, why some of the chaos was going on because landing with my friends from Florida and then they were in LA for about 10 days or maybe it was exactly two weeks and we did a little bit of Disneyland filming in that time and some other stuff. And uh, I was driving back and forth to LA every day. And then, like I said, I've just been having a little health trouble, but uh, I think that's gonna be fine. I think that's gonna balance itself out here, but taking a little break this week, trying to take it easy, uh, only hiking up a few mountains, only wandering over a few trails, only walking a few dozen miles, not hundreds of miles, and uh, <laughs> trying to take it easy, relax have the convos, talk to my brother about lots of stuff, talk to my dad about lots of stuff, 
Talk to my son about lots of stuff. Like I said, cats in the cradle and the silver spoon, yeah. And uh, yeah, we're just chilling. So just wanted to invite you guys along for a little part of the experience. Um, but to invite you to the whole experience would be to uh, sort of add in people who aren't, who aren't in the uh, family boys club into the group. And that would just be rude. So farewell from my brother and London up there who's got his little hood on. And my dad and myself from Skidoo. California, pretty doable road. Honestly, if you had pretty much just a little bit of high clearance, you could make it up here. If you had a, you could probably make it in an outback even, or something like that. My Ford Escape probably could have even made it up here today. Although road conditions at the end were a little bit, a little bit rougher, a little bit more like what you see here actually. But yeah, if you got a four wheel drive and you want to come out and check out Skidoo out in Death Valley, now's the time to do it out here in the winter. Cause it's not 90 degrees. It's in the thirties. How you doing? You frozen? Yes. Don't go to the top of the hill. Why? Because it's cold? Oh yeah, the uh, wind. The wind's the, coming from that way. The wind got me in the face and then I had to go down to the bottom of the hill and check out the bottom of the mill. And it's funny because that area closed sign, you really cannot tell which area is closed. Mm -hmm. And it's so old. But when I came up, all those older people were coming up from there. Uh, well, two were coming down here. But there was three or four coming from that way. So I was like, well, is no area closed? What area is closed? I guess we'll find out when we get a ticket in the mail. Probably just standing on it. Dun, dun, dun. All right, guys, I'm done filming. I am ready to hang out with the boy and the old man and the brother. Mon frere, mon père, and mon mijo. Uh, so it's time to go home, sleep well. Thanks for joining us. Next time I'll hopefully be a little more coherent in the brain, a little more sane in the membrane, and uh, we'll see something epic uh, in a different context. I don't know if that'll be tomorrow. I don't know if that'll be on this trip or when we're back home. I don't know if it'll be in the theme park or my living room. You never can tell with the sometimes vlog because you don't know when it's going to happen. All you know is that it happens is sometimes. Now, you've done your duty. Go home and sleep well. Time to 23 skidoo.